Welcome to Reimagining Chapel. My name is Amanda Esco, and I am the director of the Religious Education Program here at the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City. Thank you for joining us today. Let's start by lighting our chalice. Got mine right here. If you have one at home, go run and go get it right now and come back. All right. Symbol of light. Symbol of knowledge. Symbol of warmth. Symbol of freedom. We light this chalice as a symbol of our faith. Here we gather to celebrate hope and the infinite possibilities of love. With our chalice lit today, I want to invite you to stand on up if you're willing and able, and let's work on our healing body movement prayer that we've been working on this month. Right, remember we start with our hands at heart center. We take a deep breath in and out. We start with our hands at our heart because it is the center of us and who we are as people. So centered within ourselves, we take a deep breath in and out. Then we hold our hands out and we stretch them out far and wide so we can serve others. Then we raise our hands up over our heads, reminding us that we are one with the universe and back down again, back to our hearts. Let's do that one more time. Are you ready? Take a deep breath in, out at our heart center one with ourselves, bringing our hands out and taking a deep breath in and out to serve others. Back up again. We are one with our universe and back down to our own hearts. Thank you for doing that body prayer with me. When we do healing movements like that, it grounds us in the spaces we're in and within ourselves. They're important in our process of healing, as we've been talking about this month. Uh, something else that's important in our healing is sharing our lives with the people that love us. I want you to look around right now. Do a 180. Who is near you? Who is in your house that loves you so much right now? I want you to stop and tell them what's on your heart. Share your joy and concern with them, and they can share with you theirs. This is part of our healing, is sharing what's in ourselves. Go share with them, and I'll be right here waiting for you. Thank you for sharing your joys and concerns with the people that love you. Right now, we're lucky enough to hear about a new UU of the week from our own dear Miss Lissa. She's sharing with someone that is actually new to me. Thank you for learning with us, Lissa. the Religious Education Assistant at the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City, and I am so excited to share our newest Unitarian Universalist of the week, Cecilia Payne. She was born in the year 1900 in England and was a gifted scientist who wrote the most brilliant paper about the makeup of the universe ever, and she was a Unitarian. Cecilia was interested in many subjects during her schooling, including astronomy, music, botany, physics, and chemistry. She was lucky to work with a few teachers who saw her gifted mind for science and who encouraged her to continue her studies. Cecilia Payne was accepted to Cambridge, which is a prestigious university in the United Kingdom. She studied physics and chemistry, which is where she heard a lecture on Einstein's theory of relativity, which changed her life. She said, the result was a complete transformation of my world picture. My world had been so shaken that I experienced something very like a nervous breakdown, which 
I think is the most amazing amount of enthusiasm for a theory that I personally struggle to understand. Cecilia Payne completed her studies at Cambridge, but she was not awarded the degree that she had earned because Cambridge University did not grant degrees to women. And it would not be for another 30 years until they started in the year 1948. Boo, Cambridge. Cecilia realized that the only job she could get in the United Kingdom was as a teacher. So she decided to further her studies in America and began searching for grants to help her move. The Harvard Observatory, which had a program in astronomy or the study of space, had just created a fellowship for women. Cecilia Payne was the second woman to receive this fellowship, and so she moved to Boston. Harvard would not let her into the physics department, however, where she felt like she belonged. So she settled for astronomy, but she quickly began work on her PhD. Cecilia had started studying the spectrum of light that is emitted by stars when she was at Cambridge. Scientists had discovered that they could capture the light from distant stars and study the spectrum or the colors hiding inside the light. We remember that the light all around us is what we call white light, but it's really a perfect mix of the rainbow colors which we can only see if we bend the light, like shining the light through a crystal or a raindrop. Scientists discovered that they could connect the colors to the temperature of the star, but Cecilia knew that she could also connect the colors to different elements, meaning what the star was made of. For example, like strontium, which burns red, or copper, which burns blue. Cecilia Payne studied the spectrums of the stars and concluded that they were made mostly of hydrogen and a bit of helium. She wrote her PhD dissertation, which is a big paper students have to write before they get their degree, and she explained her findings. But her advisor disagreed with her because the accepted theory at the time was that the entire universe must be made of the same elements as the Earth which is mostly silicone and carbon. Her advisor forced her to change her thesis or her main idea in order to earn her degree. She did so because she saw it was a losing battle, but she worded it in a way that showed that she still knew she was right, that the universe is made mostly of hydrogen. Later, Cecilia Payne was proved right, but almost no one knows it was her discovery. Leading scientists have said that she should have won a Nobel Prize and should have become a household name like Isaac Newton or Charles Darwin. <sighs> Alas, Cecilia Payne wrote the first dissertation in astronomy department at Harvard. She became the first woman to become a full professor at Harvard and the first female chair of a department there. That's a lot of firsts. She married a fellow physicist and started a family. She continued teaching at Harvard. She was still underpaid and underappreciated, but she continued to study and teach because she loved it and it was important. Cecilia Payne Gaspochkin and her husband attended First Parish of Lexington, which is a Unitarian church there. Their children attended Sunday school, and Cecilia also volunteered as a Sunday school teacher. Her daughter, Catherine, told a story to UU World about her mother donning heaven, heavy woolen pants and walking more than three miles just to teach Sunday school on a bitterly cold morning when the family car would not start. The story reveals a great deal about her character, the article says. In her autobiography, she describes her attitude in the face of slow promotions and low pay. I simply went on plotting, rewarded by the beauty of the scenery towards an unexpected goal. I am happy to add Cecilia Payne to our UU of the Week collection. Thank you for joining us. 
Let's see what's inside our Wonder Box today. I have leaves that have words written on them. One says, teachers who care for my children. Church, our home. These are all things my family has written that they are thankful for. Gratitude is a little bit like the leaves on a tree of our lives. Let's imagine ourselves as a great big tree rooted deep into the ground. Off are our branches. All of the leaves that make up the wonderful things that are in our lives, like our teachers and our houses and church and our toys. The leaves on each person's tree are different, but these leaves provide us with shade and color and joy. And as we get older, we get to reevaluate our leaves. As we grow and change, some leaves may drop, like maybe toys is replaced with the job you love as you grow older. Recognizing the things that we are grateful for is an important spiritual practice. It not only grounds us in the life we have, but it helps heal our souls, helping us look toward the future. Today, I have a book to share with you. It's called Thankful by Eileen Spinelli. Thankful by Eileen Spinelli. Illustrated by Archie Preston. The waitress is thankful for comfortable shoes. The local reporter for interesting news. The gardener's thankful for every green sprout. The fireman for putting the fire out. The poet is thankful for words that rhyme. The children for morning story time. The artist is thankful for color and light. The clown for her costume, silly and bright. The doctor is thankful when patients get well. The traveler for a cozy hotel. The dancer is thankful. She loves the beat that stirs her heart and hips and feet. The chef is thankful for plates licked clean. The tailor for her sewing machine. The queen is thankful for afternoon tea. The beekeeper for the honeybee. The mayor is thankful for every vote. The sailor for his sturdy boat. The birder is thankful to list a new bird. The pastor is thankful for God's loving word. The crafter is thankful for glitter and glue. And me, I'm ever so thankful for you. I like this book because I think it does such a nice job illustrating all the ideas of gratitude we have in our lives for the very big things in our everyday and our very little ordinary, lovely ways that we are grateful. As we enter this week with Thanksgiving right around the corner, let's think of all the ways that we can show gratitude in our lives. Thank you for joining us today for Reimagining Chapel. To find out more about the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City, please visit us at slcuu.org. Until next time, though, let's heart out. Bye, bye, people have a say.